Hey guys, what's up? It has been far too long since I have uploaded a video and I want to apologize. I've just really been doing a lot of um, soul searching, trying to figure out what it is I'm trying to accomplish with the YouTube channel. I don't want to be um, doing something that I don't believe in as far as um, that goes. So I'm just trying to make sure I'm making videos that to me are beneficial for you and beneficial for the community as a whole. So I don't necessarily need to go into all the details of what I've been thinking about, but maybe one day I'll post a video about it. Let's get started today. We're gonna work on the bisection method. I'm gonna code that up here in Python 3. And I'm, I feel like the way that I've done it is pretty unique and it's kind of a new, a new direction. So. Hopefully you will too. Hopefully it's going to make sense. It's pretty much exactly how I would do it by hand. And I'm also going to try to use some good programming practices from computer science. That's not typically what happens when you see a video on programming numerical analysis. So let's get to it. The first thing I'm going to do is define the function. I want to find um, the, the zero of, and I will just work with the function x squared minus one so basically just a parabola that's been shifted down so that's my function i want to find the zero of this function how am i going to do that well i'm going to use the bisect method so i'm going to define a function i'm going to call it bisect and it's going to take in three parameters a b and a tolerance so a is going to be the lower bound that i start off with in the bisection method and b is going to be the upper bound that i have in my bisect method and i'm going to find the First of all, well, I need to do a loop. So while error is greater than tolerance, well, I'm already in trouble. I need to have an error defined. And what is my error? Well, I'm going to make my error infinity. But I can't just type infinity because Python doesn't know that I mean infinite. What I have to do is take uh, this infinite tag string and get Python to convert that to a floating point number for me. So I can do that. And now my error is initialized to be infinity. Now in my while loop, I need to calculate the midpoint of my interval. So midpoint equals, well, is it like a plus b over two? So a plus b over two. Well, that would work. That would be okay. But A and B, I need to kind of like keep track of those and those might change throughout. So what I'm gonna do instead of using A and B is I'm going to define something new. I'm going to say my current lower bound of my interval where the zero is, is A. And the current upper bound of my interval is B. So that's just like how I would do it by hand. I would just literally say um, my interval where the zero is starts out to be the interval a, b. So I'll say current lower bound is a, current upper bound is b. And that's gonna give me something to start off with. And then for error calculations, I'm also gonna need something called old, I'll call it old root equals a. So that's gonna initialize this thing that I need to calculate my error. So now I can use my current lower bound plus my current upper bound and divide that by two to get my midpoint. So that'll give me the midpoint of this interval. And let's see, that's good. What do I do after that? Well, I calculate the error, but I only calculate the error, let's say if the midpoint is not equal to zero then I'm going to say error equals absolute value of, I'm gonna say it's the midpoint minus the old root divided by the midpoint, so it's gonna be relative to the new value, times 100. So now this is a percentage of the new value and this is my error that I'm gonna use. It's called the relative approximate percent error. And so I'm basically taking the, the current value minus the old value divided by the current value times 100%. So 
So it's gonna give me a percentage. So this is error as a percent of the current value. And that's gonna be what I use for my error. You can use a bunch of different things, but that's what I'll use. Um, now, let me say if the function value of my midpoint is equal to zero, well then I just need to break because I've found the zero of the function. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say, if I do find the, the zero of the function, or I shouldn't say the zero, I should say a zero of the function. If I found a zero of the function, then I go ahead and just break out of this while loop. So far so good. Um, let's see, so I got my function, I got the bisect function going here. Now, I need to update my interval appropriately. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to check to see if f of a and f of midpoint are of the same sign. And basically that means plus or minus. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna say if, so open parentheses here, if is positive f of current lower bound, and let's say and is positive so this is going to be a function i need to create f of midpoint so if they're both positive then i know it's not in the interval current lower bound to a so what i'm doing is going to wrap that in parentheses and then i'll say or Again, I'm gonna wrap this in parentheses, is negative, that's another function I'm gonna to need to create, is negative f of current lower bound. And is negative f of midpoint. So basically if they're both positive or if they're both negative, then I know the midpoint. So now we know the zero is in the interval midpoint to current upper bound. So that means my new lower bound, so I should say update my current lower bound to be the midpoint. Else, well, if it's not in the intervals, uh, basically if they have different signs, then I can say, now we know the zero is in the interval current lower bound to midpoint. So basically just copy and paste there. I'll change this to current lower bound to midpoint which means I need to update my current upper bound to be the midpoint in this case. So now, what about these two functions I haven't used yet, or haven't created yet? These functions is positive and is negative. So, I need to come up here and create those functions. So let me define a function, definition is positive, and this is where the good programming practices come in. I'm gonna create a function that I'm gonna use later. So is positive means if x is greater than zero, if x is greater than zero, return true. Else return, well, oops, backwards with that, return false. So that's my is positive function. Then I'm going to define is negative in terms of that function. So I'll have an is negative method and it's gonna take in a real number x. And I should say return not is positive of x. So basically it's just gonna return the negation of is positive. So um, I guess I should technically make sure if 
x is not zero, then return not is positive x. Um, we should say else return false because zero is not negative. Well, is it? Technically, maybe. But that's a scenario we won't really want to run into because in our while loop we have a, a break that we will never actually reach um, that case anyway, at least. But it's good programming practice just to put it in there, I guess. So hopefully this is going to work. I'm feeling pretty good. Um, let's see. Is there anything else I need to do? Yeah, I think I need to update my current old root because I haven't done that yet. So when I go back to the top of the while loop, I want my old root to be updated to the midpoint value. So let's see, I think, I think that's pretty good. So now once I get out of my while loop, so this is still like the, in my while loop. Now I'm out of the while loop right there. So now I'm gonna say root equals midpoint. And then I'm gonna return for my bisect function because this is like the last part of my bisect function. I need to return something. I'm gonna return a list of the root, f of the root, so basically the function value, and the error. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now I need to test it out. So I'm gonna say solution vector is gonna be equal to bisect of well, let's think about the function I've defined. The function I defined up here, x squared minus one is a parabola pointing up, shifted down, has a zero at one and negative one. And so I'm gonna find a zero between zero and 1.2. And I'll do a tolerance of 0.01. And so that's my solution. And I know it's gonna return a list. So the solution is actually gonna be a list of three elements. And let me print that out. So what I'm gonna print is I'm gonna print something like a string and it's gonna say the estimate of the root is, and I'll put that right there, um, with a function value of something and a, an error of something else. And then after that string, I'll type dot format and put a space after this of and after this of. Really don't need all these extra helps. Okay, and then I type format. And now what am I gonna put in there? I'm gonna put in the solution of zero. So the first element of my solution is the root, the second element of my solution is the function value, and the third element of my solution is the error. And maybe, just maybe. Okay, so what's gonna happen here is this bracket is gonna be replaced with solution of zero. This bracket is gonna be replaced with solution of one, and this bracket is gonna be replaced with solution of two. And that's gonna give me uh, my root, my function value, and the error. So now all I need to do is save, hopefully, and run. So let's see what happens. Cross my fingers, hope to die. Oh no, or hope not to die. I don't know what that saying is. Anyway, um, let's see. None int problems with my function is positive. Is positive, is negative. Let's check it. Not supported type error greater than something. Let's see. All right, so let's uh, probably a good time to run a debugger. So let's run a debugger. Let's see, let me put a breakpoint where we were having the errors. We had the errors right here, so put a breakpoint, start debugging. It should go all the way to that point, and then it says uh, midpoint, uh, not defined. So for some reason, let's go back one step. So step out, midpoint is defined. So let's step into that again. So somehow when I get to this is positive, my function value is undefined. Whoops. So my function value now is undefined. So let's go to our function. So function, there it is. Yeah, so we don't have a return. We need to return x squared minus one. So that was the problem. It 
least it looks like that was the problem. So I'm just going to stop debugging, remove that breakpoint, and let me run. Uh, very nice. I think uh, my tolerance is a little lower. I changed it. Let's uh, run it. 0.01 gives me a root of 0.999755893. And the function value is negative 4.88 times 10 to the negative fifth, which is pretty close to zero. And the, the error is 0.0073%, which is pretty small. So yeah, if I do change that um, a little bit smaller on the tolerance and I run it again, then yeah, it looks like we are getting closer and closer to one with our zero and our function values are getting closer and closer to zero and our error is also going to zero. So looks like this is right. And now, of course, I don't want to just stop here. I'd prefer to get a little bit more visual. So I just decided to go ahead and create an animation. I basically use the same, more or less the same setup. I add some ways to store the points as I get them and then plot them. Let's see what happens. I'm going to run this. And I get a nice little animation here. The first point I plot is this uh, point at zero and then this point at 1.2. So those were the endpoints of my interval. And then I'm basically just plotting the midpoint each time. And it's starting to hover in on this one zero location, x equals one, y equals zero, because that's exactly what a root is. So my function values are getting closer and closer to zero as I go through the bisect method here. So hopefully you enjoyed this, uh, this video going through the bisection method in a more hopefully unique and intuitive way. If uh, you liked it, if you think it was good if, or whatever, just leave some comments, give me some feedback. I, I absolutely love feedback. So thanks for watching. Have a good day. It's good to be back.